Mother, are Post 40% Bran Flakes really the best tasting cereal of them all? Well, your father says so, and father knows best. <laughs> It's Father Knows Best, transcribed in Hollywood, starring Robert Young as Father. A half-hour visit with your neighbors, the Andersons. Brought to you by America's largest selling brand flakes, Post 40% brand flakes, and by Instant Postum, a good-tasting drink that's entirely caffeine-free. There are, if one cares to go into it, a wide variety of cats ranging from the prize Siamese cat down to the common alley cat or the back fence shoe dodger. However, there are not many business empires founded on this populous four-footed friend. And this low competition factor would make a feline business venture seem attractive indeed. But that's getting ahead of the story. There comes a time in every boy's life when he is presented with a great opportunity to go into business for himself. And he must take this opportunity at its tide or become lost in the trough forever. Such is the case with young Bud Anderson of 607 Maple Street, as we gather from his conversation on the phone. Like this. Oh, sure, Joe. Uh, uh, I'm going to start it right away. The quicker I start, the quicker the big money will start rolling in. Start what, Bud? Get lost, Shrimp. Can't you see I'm talking on the phone? What are you going to start? What'd you say, Joe? Well, sure, if you can get enough money to put into it. But I'm going to be president of the company. Mother! Hey, Betty, Bud's going to be president. Yeah, Joe. I'll bet he is. Have you seen Mother? Okay, Joe. You think it over and let me know. Okay, goodbye. What's the name of the company, Bud? Oh, I haven't settled on anything yet. What kind of a harebrained scheme have you gotten yourself into now? It's not a harebrained scheme. This is a real, regular, solid business. I'll bet. It could make me independently rich. Oh, sure. What are you going around selling this time, Dr. Snell's milkweed salve? No, I'm not. Is it the plastic gravy boats again? Look, I'm not going around selling anything. This is a real business. I talked it all over with Mr. Sprott. Who's Mr. Sprott? He just happens to be a big businessman from the East. Gee, where'd you meet him, bud? <laughs> oh, I, I met him. Is he going to give you half interest in a railroad? All right, go ahead, laugh. But just wait till the big money starts to roll in. I'll get it. No, I'll get it. It's Ralph. Hello? Oh, oh no, Mr. Anderson isn't home from the office yet. What? Oh, why, yes, he's here. Well, it's for you, bud, Mr. Sprott. Gee, he sounds important. Naturally. Hello, Mr. Sprott. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, I'm checking into that. Yes, I, I will just as soon as I get the other matter settled. Check. 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 <laughs> All right, Mr. Sprott. Goodbye. Mm -hmm. Um, Bud, just what is this business you're going into? Oh, it's pretty complicated. I doubt if you'd understand it. Bud! Where are you, Bud? In the den, Mom. I, um, have a note here from your teacher to remind you to do your homework in history and arithmetic. Well, I don't think I'm going to need that school stuff much longer. What's this? I might have to quit school pretty soon anyway. Yeah, he's going to be the president of a check company. <laughs> all right, Shrimp, don't blab everything. You got it wrong anyway. What's this all about, bud? Oh, it's a... Margaret, I'm home. Where is everyone? Hey, in the den, dear. Oh. Oh, what's going on here? A private conference? Say, Dad. No, it's just a social gathering. Hi, Daddy. Hello, kitten. Dad. Father, did you know that Bud's going into business? I'll tell him. Dad, I want to talk to you. Well, fine. Go right ahead. I'm listening. Alone. Oh? Well, I guess I can take a hint. Come on, girls. You can help me with the dinner. I want to stay and listen. No, come along, Angel. <laughs> Say, Father, I want to ask you, should I dye my hair black? Black? Ralph is always raving about Jane and Nick's beautiful hair. So well, Bud, what's on your mind? Well, Dad. Yes? Dad, I, uh... 
Well, I, I guess raising kids is pretty expensive, isn't it? Well, it's not cheap. <laughs> and I, I guess you'd be pretty happy if one of your kids started helping out by making big money. Well, I wouldn't object to it. Uh, what are you leading up to? Well, uh, if I asked you for 50 bucks, you'd probably turn me down, wouldn't you? Uh, yes, probably. <laughs> That's why I'm cutting it down to 25. 25? <laughs> well, now look, bud. Now wait, Dad. This is just a loan I want. I'll be able to pay it back in no time at all. But first I have to have some capital to get started. Get started in what? This is going to be the biggest thing since miniature golf. What is? This business I'm starting. Well, can't you tell me what it is? You act as though it's some kind of smuggling. Well, it's not exactly smuggling, but they are hard to get. What are? The cats I'm going to raise. <laughs> cats? Well, now, don't blow your stack, Dad. These aren't just plain old everyday cats. These are genuine Panama cats. Panama cats? As far as I know, there isn't such a thing. There's Siamese cats. There's and... Panama cats, too. And Mr. Sprott imports them direct from Panama. He does, huh? And uh, who is Mr. Sprott? Oh, he's a big businessman from the East. Big dealer in cats. Big dealer, huh? I get the exclusive right to raise them and sell them in this territory. Well, bud, I don't think there's much of a market for Panama cats. Huh? Why, they're a big rage in the East. I never heard of them. Well, that's why now's the time to get in. Get in on the ground floor. Twenty-five bucks buys my first pair, and from there on, the stock builds itself up. Yes, but uh, look, bud... Two litters of five kittens gives you ten more the first year. That makes twelve altogether, and they're worth anywhere from fifty to seventy-five bucks apiece. Oh, come now, bud. Mr. Sprott said so. All right, but... Look at your French poodles. Three hundred bucks, five hundred bucks... Bud, will you listen to me? Two more litters the next year would give you a hundred and twenty cats. At fifty smacks a throw, that's six thousand dollars the second year. Bud... The second year, Dad. Yeah, I heard that. But look... Look, the third year, you'd have 1,200 cats. Heaven <laughs> forbid. That's $60,000. I figured this whole thing out on paper. Yeah, well, in the first place, your arithmetic is a little over-enthusiastic. And in the second... 60000 bucks from just a measly little old $25 investment. But have you ever thought how much it would cost to feed all those cats? Feed them scraps. Yeah. You take about $10,000 worth of scraps. And where would you house them? You'd need a few acres to raise 1,200 cats. Oh, no. I, I, I'd sell them off just as soon as they were born. Well, if you do that, who's going to produce all these hundreds of cats? Huh? <laughs> Now, look, bud, I don't know what this sprot told you, but... Uh... Holy cow, Dad. You always throw cold water on everything I try to now, do. Now, that's not true, bud. I was just trying to make you see... I that... knew it was no use to ask you for the money. Well, now you've got better judgment than this. If you just stop and figure it out carefully... You won't lend me the money, huh? Why, certainly not. Okay, okay. Bud, come back here. Hi, Bud. Is Daddy going in business with you? Out of my way, Shrim. How soon he's going to start? A lot sooner than anybody thinks. Gosh, where is he going in such a hurry? I don't know. Maybe he's anxious to start being president. Where's Bud? He just shot out the door like a guided missile. Oh? What happened? Oh, nothing. He'll be all right. Well, watch out, Caddy. This place hot. Here, let me take it, Margaret. No, you're liable to spill it on your good suit. There. Well, I guess we can sit down now. I have news for you, Margaret. This is no longer my good suit. I bought a new one today. You did? What color is it, Father? Salt and pepper. They're going to deliver it this evening. But wait till I tell you what I paid for it. You'll never believe it. Ah, uh, $500? <laughs> well, it's just about that ridiculous. $15.95. What? $15.95. Oh, now, Jim. I know it sounds silly, but it's the truth. What's it made of, burlap? <laughs> no, sir. The finest all-wool worsted material. I learned plenty about the clothing business from this fellow. What fellow? Ed Davis put me on to him. He buys all his materials direct from the mills. And he gets them for practically nothing because they're supposed to have slight blemishes in them. But by George, you can't find them. 
Jim, you didn't really buy a suit like that. You bet your life I did. In the first place, if you know good materials, which I do, you're safe. Father. You've got to figure the angles on these things. That's all there is to it. Father, do you think I'd look good with black hair? You'd look good with any colored hair, princess. Now, just wait till you see that suit. Mother, did you hear that? Father says I can dye my hair. Dye you... Now, wait, I didn't say that. Father, Janie Liggett is a brunette, and everyone's always raving about her utterly beautiful hair, especially Ralph. Well, with her, it's natural, though. That's her original paint job. I don't care. Betty, you look very sweet and pretty just the way you are, and I don't want you to even discuss it anymore. And let's eat before everything gets cold. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait a minute. Where's Bud? He went someplace. Well, he's probably out on the porch sulking. You go tell him dinner's ready, kitten. All right, Daddy. Father, did Bud ever break down and tell you what his big business deal was? Yes, I was wondering that, too. He acted so secretive about it. (laughs) Oh, he had dreams of becoming a big cat merchant. A what? Oh, Betty, I forgot the rolls. All right. What's a cat merchant? Well, it seems that there's some new kind of a cat on the market, a Panama cat. Never heard of it. And evidently, there's somewhat of a fad somewhere in the east. So Bud was going to raise them. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. Where did he get an idea like that? Claude Messner, I suppose. No, some fellow by the name of Sprott. I talked to that Mr. Sprott on the phone, and he sounded real important. Where do you want the rolls? Well, just set them anywhere. He sounded real good looking. I wonder if he prefers brunettes. I wish Bud would hurry. Oh, where's Kathy? She went after Bud. Well, better you'd better go after Kathy. Everything will be cold if they don't hurry. They'll be in. I want to hear more about Mr. Sprott. Betty, please go call Kathy and Bud, hmm? Oh, all right. <laughs> Poor Bud. He thought he had it all figured out. He's been going through that old mathematical process of compiling the increase in cats. And he had his profits up to $60,000 in three years. Mm, that'd be nice. Yes. I'd like to find something like that myself. I found Kathy, but we can't find Bud. I looked all over. Well, he'll be back. He's probably out walking, thinking. I know how he feels. Well, his dinner's getting cold. Betty, you'd better put his plate in the oven. Oh, wait a minute. I think I heard the door. Maybe that's him. Bud, is that you? Yeah. Well, dinner's on. You'd better hurry. I'm coming. Pass the bread, please, Father. Where were you, Bud? Oh. Oh. Well, Dad, I did it. Did what, son? I made up my mind. Do you think we'd have the steamboat today if Robert Fulton had quit when everyone was against him? Well, chances are somebody else... Do you think we'd have lightning today if Benjamin Franklin had given up when everybody laughed at him? But what are you talking about? Just this. I'm in the Panama cat business. You're in the... But wait, where did you get the money? I sold my motor scooter for 25 bucks. Oh, but you didn't. You bet your life I did. Pass me the meat. I'm hungry. looks as if Bud is all ready to set the financial world on fire. I suspect, however, that he's going to find business is a little more complicated than he imagined. But you mothers listening in, if you want to solve the problem of what to serve for breakfast, listen. You've undoubtedly heard many times that bran is good for you because it contains those important keep regular benefits. Perhaps, mother, you've even served it, but found that your family wasn't too keen about its flavor. Well, all that's been changed. Yes, something wonderful has happened. Today's new post-40% bran flakes have a perfectly delicious new flavor. A magic oven flavor and crisper texture that's so good, this cereal is becoming the breakfast favorite of more and more people every day. And that's important to you, because now you can serve post-bran flakes and be sure that your family will be getting their ounce of prevention, the important keep regular benefits of bran, in a cereal they'll really enjoy. With this in mind, I hope that you'll start serving post-40% Fran Flakes regularly. For goodness sake, eat post Fran Flakes. So good and so good for you. But when you do your shopping this weekend, don't forget post-40% Fran Flakes, America's largest selling Fran Flakes. They're good and so good for you. Any 
anybody like to buy a Panama cat? Don't ask me what a Panama cat is. I've never seen one. But it looks like the local dealer in Springfield is going to be young Bud Anderson of 607 Maple Street. The other members of the family, Jim Anderson in particular, seem to have certain misgivings about this feline cartel. But Bud is riding high on a rosy wave of optimism. Like this. How can it miss? Everybody likes cats. But the point is, Bud, even if the cats are wonderful, it, it takes so long to raise them. Not these cats, Mom. They grow fast. They come from Panama, down in the tropics. Everything grows fast down there. <laughs> All right, they grow fast down there. You're going to be raising them up here. Yeah, but they don't know the difference. <laughs> they think they're still in the tropics. What's the tropics? Have you already paid this Mr. Sprott for the cat? Sure, I sold the scooter to Joe Phillips and took the money down to Mr. Sprott at the drugstore. At the drugstore? Yeah, that's kind of where he makes his headquarters. Oh, dear. Well, he's a busy man. He hasn't got time to hang around an office. The cat business is booming. A guy's got to keep on the move. I think I can understand why Mr. Sprott has to keep on the move. <laughs> of all the harebrained schemes, I think it's nothing but a swindle. What's a swindle? It's not a swindle. What's a swindle? He really saw you coming. What is it? Kitten, what are you talking about? How do I know? Nobody will tell me. <laughs> Look, bud, do you have anything to show for that money you gave this Mr. Sprott? Sure, I'll have the cats. No, bud, your mother means now. You gave him $25. Did he give you a receipt? Receipt? Something to prove you gave him the money. What do I want a receipt for? I gave him the money, and he's going to give me the cats. It's a clean deal. But you haven't got the cats. I'm going to get them. How do you know? Holy cow. Dad, she doesn't know anything about business. Will you explain it to her? Well, Bud, as a matter of fact... It's so simple. Any nitwit could see it. Oh, sure. I give him the money, he gives me the cash. I know. It's, it's a, a clean, clean deal. deal. <laughs> I give up. You're hopeless. Positively hopeless. Women, they just don't understand business. I understand it. You gave the man the money, and he's going to wash the cat. <laughs> oh, go on. Get out. Go, go, go. Okay, okay. You don't have to push. But I know you're excited about all this, and it's your first business venture. But... I figure in about six months I can start paying you for my board and room, Mom. I'll have the cats rolling by then. Now, wait, son. I, I, I don't want to be a wet blanket, and I'm not trying to discourage I you. I probably won't keep them in the house. Kathy be pulling their tails and everything. I think I'll build a shed in back of the garage. Bud. Put a heater out there. Dad, how hot does it get down in Panama? Bud, are you listening to me? Sure. Now, think of this thing sensibly. Be practical about it. There's electricity in the garage, and I could use that old heater in the basement. It's got to be warm, especially for the baby cats. they got to have it warm. Hmm. I don't think you're getting through to him, dear. Try another wavelength. But when is Mr. Sprott going to deliver these cats? Oh, he isn't going to deliver them himself. He has a fellow that does that. Be here at 7.30, he said. Well, he's a little late, isn't he? It's almost 8 o'clock now. It is? Well, holy cow. Maybe he couldn't find the house. Is the porch light on? The porch light is on. Now, look, bud, old man, let's face some simple facts. The chances are about 99 to 1 that you've thrown your money away. But he said the fellow would be here at 7.30. I know, but sometimes, well, there are some people who are just not honest. Now, think about it, bud. Panama cats. Doesn't it sound a little ridiculous? No. Why shouldn't they raise cats in Panama? He'll, he'll probably be here any minute. He probably got tied up with, with, with some other deliveries or something. Mother? Yes? Ralph hasn't called, has he? Are you expecting a call? He's over in Hillbrook. Not yet. I thought I heard the phone. I'll let you know. Is that somebody at the door? No, bud. Now settle down and let's face the truth. You've probably lost your $25. I'm going to check with the Better Business Bureau in the morning. Tell them about this cat deal. But you've had your first experience with a swindler, a jip artist. It could be a valuable lesson. Mommy, where are my pajamas? Uh, they're with the clean clothes on the back porch. I'll get them. Gee, Dad, uh, Mr. Sprott told me I'd get the cats. 
He told me right there in the drugstore. I know, I know. But you should have checked on this man's spot before you gave him the money. I did. I asked a lot of questions. Who did you ask? Mr. Spock. <laughs> oh, but... I knew he was honest, Dad. He had a gold watch chain and wore black shoes. <laughs> oh, fine. But you have to know more than that to tell if a man is honest. You have to analyze what he says, see if it makes sense. Uh, take my experience today, for example. I bought a suit. A whole suit for just $15.95. Dollars? Fifteen dollars and ninety-five cents. Now, the first thing a person would say is, that's impossible. The suit's no good. You're being swindled. Yeah. But I sized up the salesman, analyzed his claims, inspected the material and workmanship in the suit, and I found that everything they claimed for the suit was true. It was a real bargain. But you see, I checked. I investigated. Oh, I can't believe Mr. Spot would jip me. He's such a nice guy. Ah, uh, that's where you have to be careful. All confidence men are nice guys. You have to be able to see through that smiling front they put up. Hey, front door. Uh, maybe it's the guy with the cat. Is that the phone? Will you answer it, dear? It's the front door. Is it Ralph? Are you there, dear? It was the doorbell. Still who? It was the front door. Oh. <laughs> it wasn't the guy with the cat. It's a package for you, Dan. Well, my suit. Margaret, come look at my suit. And after eight. Said he'd be here at 7.30 with a cat. Say, look at that. Now, what do you think of that suit, bud? Fifteen dollars. Maybe one of the cats got away or something. I'm going in the den and slip it on. Uh, pick up those papers there, will you, bud? Yeah. Jim! Oh, where'd he go? He's in the den putting on his suit. Oh, don't look so sad, bud. I know it hurts to lose the $25. But... I just can't believe Mr. Sprout would do that, Mom. He was such a nice guy. Well... Cast an eye on this, Margaret. Doesn't this look like a $75 suit? Oh. Is that it? Why, well, yes, it looks quite nice. Just feel that material. All wool. Mm-hmm. It goes to prove, if you know your merchandise, you can pick up some real bargains. Two Panama cats for 25 bucks is a bargain. <laughs> they get here. How does it fit in the back, Margaret? Well... If I were you, I wouldn't do anything drastic like bending over to tie your shoelaces. All right, so it can be let out a little. After all, fifteen ninety-five and all wool. Hey, that's him. It's got to be him. Answer that, will you, Mother? It's the front door. Was that the telephone? No. Oh. Hey, come here, Dad. Mom, they're here. I got the cat. Oh, no. I can't believe it. Where are they, Bob? Right here in the box. A guy just delivered them. Where are they, Bob? Let me see. Let me see. Well, I never thought I'd live to see a Panama cat. <laughs> Open the box. Let's have a look at these tropical felines. Yeah. Holy cow. Those are Panama cats? Hey, I know those cats. They look like playing cats to me. They live in the next block. That's boots and that's mittens. Look out. Uh, grab them, bud. Oh, they left the front door open. Yeah. And they're getting out. There they well, go. Yeah. Where's my cat? I'll get him. Well, don't you want your coat? We'll be right back. <laughs> Bud? Bud? Darn cats, I lost them. Uh, there wasn't much point in catching them, was there? I guess not. I'm sorry, son. How do you like that? Mr. Sprout not only took my dough, but he stole the cat. Well, live and learn, my boy. He was such a nice guy. Sure, sure. But you may find as you grow older, bud, that this experience was $25 well spent. Yeah. Feels like it's raining. I had the same hard knocks when I was young. But that's the way you learn. Oh, I had to be fooled several times before I caught on. It is raining, Dad. Well, let's get back in the house. But you'll find, as I did, bud, that as you grow older, you're able to judge people. You become pretty shrewd. They, they can't fool you. It's all a matter of experience. Hurry up, Dad. It's pouring. I'm hurrying. Wow, we... Hey, we got salt. Ooh, the cloud burst. Coming down in buckets. Jim, for heaven's sake, look at you. Hey, Daddy, look at Daddy. Well, I got wet. What about it? It won't hurt this suit. It, it, uh... <laughs> Harvey, something's wrong. 
Hey, Dad, your suit's moving. <laughs> moving? It's getting smaller. Oh, that crooked salesman. <laughs> Live and learn, dear. Fifteen ninety-five. Well, let's say fifteen ninety-five for the coat, dear. The pants are going up. <laughs> hey, Jay, the fella cheated you on that suit. How come? I can't understand it, Bud. He was such a nice guy. <laughs> And now, before the final surprise of tonight's show, here's Margaret Anderson. Fate was pretty unkind to the Anderson men tonight, and so was the weather. But now that Jim and Bud have had their hot postum, well, everything's looking up. That's usually the case, isn't it? When you've had a cheering cup of postum. We love it. And of course, even Kathy can enjoy postum all she wants. That's because postum contains no caffeine, nothing to upset you or your sleep. And say, would you believe it, but Postum costs less than one-third of what coffee costs. See why I like Postum? Well, why don't you try it on your family? It's instant. Instant Postum. If you really want to play it safe around the white frame house on Maple Street this morning... Better not say anything about Panama cats or all-wool suits for $15.95. At the breakfast table right now, the Andersons are keeping the conversation on a nice, safe level. Like this. Um, it certainly cleared off after the rain last night. Honey, do you mind if we don't discuss rain? <laughs> Why not, Daddy? Does it remind you of your $15.95? Pass the milk, please. <laughs> Do you mind if we don't mention milk? <laughs> What's wrong with milk? Probably reminds him of Panama. Has the salt and pepper. But do you mind? That's right. <laughs> the soup was a salt. Margaret? Well, I guess we just can't talk anymore at all. That's bad. That's good. <laughs> Join us again next week when we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson. Until then, good night and good luck from the makers of Post 40% Bran Flakes, America's largest selling Bran Flakes, and Instant Postum, the drink that's entirely caffeine-free. In our cast were Ted Donaldson as Bud, Dorothy Lovett, Rhoda Williams, and Helen Strome. Mom, I think you're beautiful. Well, thank you, Johnny. You're the most beautiful woman in the whole world. Thank you, Johnny. Mom. Yes, Johnny. Can I have wheat meal for breakfast tomorrow? Sure. Make him happy, Mom, with the best hot cereal anywhere. Post wheat meal is packed full of solid nourishment, great for kids, and so wonderfully delicious. Post wheat meal cooks in just three minutes. Try rich, hot post wheat meal with a picture of Roy Rogers on the package. Post wheat meal, the best hot cereal you ever ate. Friends, 90% of forest fires are man-made due to thoughtlessness and carelessness. So... On your vacations and weekend trips, be watchful of sparks from your matches and smoking, and take special care of your campfires, won't you? Only you can prevent forest fires. Father Knows Best was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Paul West and Roswell Rogers. This is Bill Foreman speaking. Tonight, play Truth or Consequences on NBC.